What's up, guys? It's your boy, the Piscine Predator, back with some TPP True Crime Talk, and we on a oh, oh my goodness, another day of this Murdoch trial, baby. And man, today was another one of those days, dude. This energy, this energy in this case ain't going down. Now, man, we got one hell of a description and a layout of the timeline and the digital footprints from all the digital devices today. We got like that laid out laid out i mean we got like where vehicles were stopped we got vehicle speeds i mean every every little bit of information that you could think of from all the the devices from the cars to the phones to everything was laid out today in a timeline and let me tell you <laughs> let me tell you that timeline it uh it definitely <laughs> it definitely uh calls into question Mr. Murdoch's uh you know his story and his story ain't making a whole lot of sense now I mean it didn't really in the beginning if you had common sense but now seeing the layout the information it's uh yeah come on man like dude they, they broke down the average speed for his morning commutes right to work from home to you know from home to work from work to home and the average speed and everything and it was like a normal drive but then the drive that he takes from you know the uh moselle to the other place um oh, i can't think of the name to you know where his mom's gonna be this dude hit like 70 or 80 and then on the way back he did the same thing he topped that max speed the average speed and that was at night on a, on a really dangerous road to be driving. So what was he doing? I mean, why was he driving that fast? And then we find out also that he had made phone calls to his wife and son after they were dead, which was just super sus. And then we find out that Paul, his son's best friend, calls Paul's phone. Obviously, he's already can't answer the phone at that point. And then immediately... Immediately, Alex calls him from Alex's phone. It just seems odd. It just seems incredibly odd. And then another one of the discrepancies that just didn't make any sense was when he showed up back to Moselle to the kennels, right? He literally, the car was stopped for like a minute before he made the 911 call. A minute? A minute is not long enough to get out, find two people murdered, the distance away that they were, and then called 911. It just does not make sense. It, it doesn't. It does not make sense. So everything that we found out today, like all the details and the timeline, like it really, in my opinion, it it, it lends to the prosecution's, um, you know, what they're trying to approve. And that was, you know, that he did this and that he did this for, you know, they want to say financial reasons shouldn't really say financial reasons but more so like he he had hit rock bottom everything was falling down around him and that was his his way out for sympathy for everything that you know has happened to his family dude i <laughs> yeah man this uh it just it's crazy okay so we got that full rundown and then you know Defense did their cross their crosses and stuff and it, it was real contentious again like it was yesterday And I don't know if that boded well for you know the defense going at it like that because a lot of times it's like They're trying to prove something was either not done right or not done at all But it's like these little things that they are trying to argue really even if You know they they get the witness to answer the way they want it's not it's not a point that's really going to matter over on the case in the big scheme of things. It just confuses the jury. And I understand that's the tactic right now is, you know, for the defense is to confuse the jury to the point where they can't process all the evidence or remember it enough to, you know, make a verdict without reasonable doubt. I mean, that, and that makes sense. But, um, yeah. So today that that was the most important stuff that really happened today was that layout and then I was listening to some correspondence um, on some on some of the news channels talking about you know exactly what I brought up on my video yesterday and that's the fact that he was spending 50 grand a week 50 grand a week on drugs 
I don't care who you are, 50 grand a week on drugs is absolutely insane. Okay, and then we, we also found out that uh, Paul had caught um, Alec with, you know, with the with the stuff. Or they're saying Maggie caught it, but he, he let, you know, Paul let Alec know, hey, mom found your stuff. And then, you know, Maggie, the wife, she started doing Google searches on what it was. But, like, okay, so we know that there was a drug situation now. Now, that was, that that's a sure, for sure thing. But $50,000 does not make sense a day for a drug problem. It just doesn't. You you would be dead. Or you wouldn't be able to function as a lawyer doing $50,000 worth of drugs. So, I brought up my video yesterday that I don't think that's the only thing that was going on with that money. I feel like that money might have been used for extracurricular activities, you know. Um, you know, there's no evidence of that except for Murdoch, Alex Murdoch having an affair about 15 years ago so let's just say like I said if he was willing to do this much uh, financial crimes this long and keep doing it and he cheated 15 years ago who's to say he wasn't still doing it and then that would make sense too because if he had a drug problem then maybe like you know a side woman then that money was probably going to that side woman and if it wasn't that the other thing that came up in the trial was the fact that he would send you know, one of the um, the runners from the, the law firm to go cash checks for him and bring them back to him. And he said when he brought them back, there would be times where there would be, you know, important people in the office. So it almost seems like maybe he was paying people off. But either way you cut it, something something's going on more than just the drugs. There's something more going on in this whole situation. It, it <laughs> Yeah, you can't tell me that it's not. There's something else going on. It's not just the drugs. And I believe, like, uh, if they were to put Cousin Eddie up on the stand, that more stuff would come out. And maybe they're not going to do that because it'll just muddy the water more for this case, for the jury. But overall, man, when you when you research this case and everything that's going on with this family, not just what we're hearing in the trial, but everything going on outside, the little things that the, the prosecution's trying to put into the trial makes more sense because it all links up. I mean, we're, we're trying the murders, per se, so we have to stick to facts on the murders, but it, it's hard because of the fact that there's so many other things that are attached to the reason why he would have done this, if he did it, which, like I said, in my opinion, just my opinion, I believe with everything that we've seen so far, circumstantial evidence of every sort, um, just, it, it, he did it, in, in my opinion, but, um, I'm I'm feeling more positive about 80% now that the the jury's gonna go um, conviction uh, guilty conviction. Uh, we still have possibility of a hung hung jury hung trial whatever, but I don't I just don't see them uh, giving him the the innocent. So to me, it's gonna either be guilty or hung jury. And I don't know if if the defense can't do a good job these next couple days of bringing you know witnesses up uh you know specialists up and and debunking the prosecution's whole timeline and just everything that they put forward so far dude he's he's gonna get the the mur i believe he's gonna be convicted of murder I, I do i truly do um because think about it too here's the thing is i'm watching all the polls right and i watched everybody start off with he's guilty just about i mean like it was in the 80s 80 percent and then it slowly dwindled down to where it was like it was like at 60% people thought he was guilty, and then not it wasn't not guilty so much, but a lot of people were hung jur. And then now all of a sudden, up the last two days, the polls are 80 plus guilty. And I don't know if the defense can come back from that. And then like I'm sitting there factoring, okay, so that's the population of people that aren't jurors looking at the case, looking at everything that's going on, and factoring that in. And they're and they're 80 percent of them that are taking these polls are saying guilty. I just, uh, I don't know if the defense is going to be able to turn that around. And I don't know if the jury is going to look at it like we all look at it, right? So a lot of people are, are you know, they're like, yeah, well, this jury is not supposed to know anything. You know, it's supposed to be fresh. There are people that are coming in and don't know anything about it. And they're, dude, that is not the case. You're, you can't tell me that those jurors don't know of the Murdochs and all the stuff that's gone on in that area. It just, there's no way. So that being said... I feel like this whole thing has put such a bad look on that area of the state that people within that community, 
I wouldn't be surprised if it if it takes less to convince them. Less than what people are thinking, right? Yes, we're supposed to have this certain uh, this certain level we're supposed to get to, right? To like of a convincement. And I don't think it's going to take that level. I think it's going to take less than that because uh, this guy has. He is he's done horrible horrible things to people in that community. He's he's controlled with fear. You know, his whole family has had the power there for so long that those jurors might be like, "You know what? Th there's enough. There's enough. And we're going to we're going to um we're going to make a statement and we're going to teach a lesson that you know, the power structure around here can't keep running the way it is ran." So and that might be a possibility. The prosecution might have done enough. They might just have done enough for these people that live in that area to be like, you know what, we're going to go ahead and, yeah, we're going to convict them. But uh, anyways, guys, so that I think we're on day 18, so that's recap for day 18. That's what's going on in the case. There's so much, and it's a long, every day is such a long trial, so there's so many little things like other people might pick up on that I don't or the, the other media sources don't. And they might cover so if there's anything that I've missed that you're curious about or you want to talk about or you're convinced about let me know down in the comment section um, I'm, I would love to get some more engagement on this um, more conversation just see where everybody's heads at with it um, but that being said guys I hope you all have a wonderful Friday much love you all if you could subscribe like comment share um, yeah it's your boy the Pisces Predator much love y'all I'm out peace